With the big guns missing, who'd you captain in game week 22? Welcome to the Gianni Petici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. We don't think Harlem will start. Salah definitely won't start, nor will Son. Who do we captain? There are some prime candidates still this game week, and there's going to be a big share of what direction we go in. And with that, there's going to be massive gains to be made. So in today's show, we're going to look at captaincy. We don't always do that on this show. Sometimes I tag it on to my team selection. Well, not today. This is a captaincy show in its own right, because it is such a big talking point this week. And there are several good options. It's really tricky. So look, we're going to pluck out three of the prime fixtures to target and then of course look at the candidates within that fixture and the back lines those candidates face and that's the really important thing for me and that's often how I decide my captaincy it's not just that the team or the player it's the opponent of course it is so likes and subscribes nice and early would be amazing guys thank you so much for subscribing on mass make sure you hit that notification bell when you do I'm going to pick out the three obvious fixtures here now these are the only three fixtures I would consider consider for captaincy, right? Fixture number one, Man City versus Burnley. Okay, this is the obvious high upside fixture, right? Um, Man City, by the way, play on Wednesday. It's worth noting the deadline is on Tuesday. Don't expect team leaks ahead of the Wednesday night games. Like we're not going to know pre-deadline if De Bruyne starts, for example. I don't think we're going to, right? Good, good fixture. Man City, remember, played in the FA Cup on Friday night. So Friday, Wednesday is a really nice rest time for them. Very few teams got that five-day window like Man City did. Spurs versus Brentford, the next one, right? This is another obvious fixture to target. The Spurs attack is fun. The Spurs attack scores goals. Brentford on the road can be quite ropey, right? Obviously, there's one outstanding candidate in the Spurs lineup. We'll talk about him later. And then the other fixture isn't it an obvious captaincy fixture, but actually perhaps it should be. Now, Liverpool-Chelsea historically doesn't produce goals, but the way Liverpool are flying at the moment, this will be the first Premier League game at Anfield off the back of Klopp's news. Obviously, they played in the FA Cup, but with Klopp stepping down and the narrative there, the incentive the players have, the fact they can't afford to drop any points, like the title race this year is so, so tight between Liverpool, Arsenal, City. It's going to be a cracking game, I think, Liverpool-Chelsea. Now, Chelsea's defence in recent weeks has been all right, but Liverpool's attack has been the best in the Premier League. And with them at Anfield and with the Klopp news, I think the likes of Jota and Darwin are actually legit captaincy options this week too. First, should we look at the opponents of those three? Look, some of you might be going, what about Arsenal? Arsenal away to Forest, maybe. I just there, There's no outstanding candidate in the Arsenal team. Right, So I'm not including Arsenal, I'm not including Saka, not for me this week. So let's look at the form, shall we? In the last six games, it's going to show quite a lot of data in this show. So in the last six game weeks, let's have a look at the form of the opponents of Man City, Spurs and, of course, Liverpool. Right? This is good if you want to captain a Man City player, guys, because when we look at goals conceded, Burnley 9, Brentford 13 and Chelsea 7, I actually prefer expected goals conceded in that time, right? Let's see how those defences, how many shots they've been facing, how many big chances they've had against them. Well, Burnley are 19th, right? They have had the worst XGC of all Premier League teams other than Newcastle who just had that shocking run, right? Newcastle are clearly a better defence than Burnley. So I rate Burnley as the weakest defence in the league right now. They are 19th in XGC. They should have conceded 11.7 in six games, right? That's almost two goals a game. And they weren't against Man City and they weren't all away from home. You go to the Emirates and I think you, you're going to struggle. You really, If City score early, this could be a 5 niller. When we look at ceiling fixtures for Man City, it's so, so obvious, right? What about Brentford? Well, they've actually conceded more than Burnley in that time. They've conceded 13 goals. Like, that's, that's outrageous for Brentford. But they should have only conceded 7.4, right? Yeah, Flecken's not been brilliant. Um... They rank seventh with expected goals conceded. So actually, they're not a bad defence, but they have been a bad defence. So again, you look at Richarlison and you go, he's going to have fun, isn't he, at home? And then you look at Chelsea. Well, very similar numbers to Brentford. 7.4 XG, but they've actually conceded around what they should have done. Their XGC is 7.4. They've actually conceded seven. So Chelsea, again, like that's sixth in rank, right? Very, very similar to Brentford. So the Chelsea defence has been good. But the Liverpool attack has been sensational. So when we look at the opponents, the standout, of course, is you captain a Man City player, right? 
I don't think we see this and discard Spurs players or Liverpool players, but we definitely see it and go, yeah, that's why I'm captain in a City player. That's reason number one, maybe why we're captain in a Man City player. But how about those attacking players in those three teams, right? So when we look at Man City, let's now look at some data for attacking players. And by the way, all this data is from Fantasy Football Scout. And check out Scout if you want to know more and have a real deep dive. You've got to become a member, but membership is absolutely worth signing up for. Uh, and it, it's it's not as much as you might think. So look, when we look at Man City assets this game week, we're going to rule out Haaland, but we've got to consider the, the obvious three, right? De Bruyne, um, Alvarez, Foden. We'll talk Spurs and Richarlison. And then when we look at Liverpool... Darwin and Jota, right? So let's compare those, what is that, three, four, five, six, seven players if we throw Saka into the mix, because why not? Because he's so highly owned. And the fixture on paper is all right. So we'll compare those seven in a sec. Before we do, though, let's just talk about Man City in general, because the big question at Man City is, is always minutes. How many minutes do those three get? Now, Haaland didn't feature in the FA Cup, I think he probably features or is on the bench versus Spurs, maybe. But he ain't starting. Surely he's not starting. But could he get 20 in the, off, off the bench? And if he gets 20, does that affect Alvarez minutes? Maybe. So I look at it and go, best case scenario, I'm going to get 60-70 from De Bruyne. Best case. I'm going to get 90 from Foden, which is actually very possible. Maybe probable. Best case scenario with Alvarez, you get 90, but I think realistically you get 70, 80. So straight away, with KDB not even being guaranteed to start, I do question if De Bruyne is a good option this week for captaincy. Is he a good transfer in as a punt with a high ceiling? Yes, he's somewhere I, someone I might buy. But if I buy him, I'm not going to be captain in him because this will be his first start if he starts and he's not going to play 90, surely. Um, so look, I'd be wary even of a De Bruyne start. Therefore, I want to captain someone I know is going to get 90. Now, all the other players on this list could easily get 90. And I include Alvarez in that. Richarlison, Darwin, Jota, Foden, right? So how do they rank in terms of their goal threat? Again, let's do last six games. We did the defensive data for the last six. Let's do some of the attacking data for the last six. Well, because they've all played, look, most of them have played all in all these six games. But because De Bruyne hasn't, right? It's a tiny sample size for De Bruyne's 20 minutes against Newcastle. But we're going to look at expected goal involvement per uh, minutes per expected goal involvement, right? So it's it's a fair comparison despite being a tiny sample size. So you could argue we should take De Bruyne's numbers out of this. But let, let's compare all the others. So look, if we filter by mins per XGI, of course De Bruyne's top with that tiny sample size. He was clocking an expected goal involvement every 61 minutes. He didn't even play that much. Um, Darwin is second on this list. He clocks an expected goal involvement within every game, every 87. So Darwin, again, like the data for Darwin has always been there. And what we saw last time out is he's got some conversion. Richarlison's got great data too. He's in third. Saka in fourth. Alvarez is in fifth at one to 8.2. So every 128 minutes, he clocks an XGI. Foden's very close to Alvarez. They're almost identical. And then actually quite some distance behind is Foden. I was quite surprised by this. Yet Foden has 32 points to Alvarez's 26. Foden has more points than Jota, than Saka. Only Richard Richarlison's got the most at 49. Only Richarlison has more points than Foden over the last six game weeks. But what this tells me is Foden's overachieving on his expected data. Now, why is he overachieving? Has he been lucky? Possibly. Or has he been playing the best football of his career? Foden got player of the match again against Spurs. Honestly, if I think about just before the Club World Cup, they played Luton. Pretty sure he got player of the match. They played at Goodison Park, maybe after the Club World Cup. Pretty sure he got player of the match. At the Club World Cup, he definitely got a player of the match in the semi or the final. Honestly, the last five, six weeks, maybe month, Foden's been City's best player by a country mile. And that's why he's being rewarded, not only with starts, but with sets of 90. He's looking amazing. And that is why I can take all this data and go, yeah, it's good. I can captain that player because the data's great. But that is why I will look at this data and go, I thought the, the data for the defence was brilliant to consider. Burnley are, are the weakest defence in the league at the moment. 
I look at City's attack in general and it's all right, but not amazing. I look at Foden's individual expected data and it's all right, but not amazing. But I look at the actual and I watch the games and the eye test and go, for me, Foden is the best captaincy option for my team this game week. Now, if I owned Richarlison, there is a strong consideration there. There would be a very strong consideration for me to go Richarlison because he's got home advantage, he's on penalties and the expected data is also brilliant and I think Brentford can be quite leaky. But I don't own Richarlison. I do own Foden and for me, he's the obvious obvious play. So I did go to the Chelsea game against Villa on Friday night and I thought if Chelsea looked weak defensively, I might go to a Liverpool attacker for captaincy. They looked pretty solid. Now Liverpool are going to be better than Aston Villa were in attack and I think Liverpool score a couple of goals. But do I see a world in which Liverpool score five? Not really. Do I see a world in which Spurs score five? Not really. Do I see a world in which Man City score five? Absolutely, I do. Now, the problem with City is the spread of points. There's no clear talisman if Haaland and De Bruyne are out the team, right? It's like, oh, is Bob or Doku or Bernardo going to pop up with goals? Or will it be my boy Foden? You just don't know. In terms of performance, I've no doubt Foden will be up there in the player of the match discussion. Will he get the FPL points? I'm not so sure. And that's probably why Foden has never been an outstanding FPL option. Right? There's a difference and we have to split it. Great player versus great FPL player. And sometimes that doesn't always translate. And Foden falls short in terms of FPL points. But I'm just backing the process of him playing well on set pieces, often playing centrally. Again, if De Bruyne starts, could Foden be out wide? Maybe. And again, that lessens his appeal a little bit. But I'm rolling the dice because I don't own Richarlison. And I think they're the two best options this week. Foden, Richarlison. If someone told me De Bruyne was playing 90 minutes he'd be the best option. If someone told me Harlan was starting, a 60-minute Harlan would probably be the best option. But we just don't know those two things. And with a Wednesday game for Man City on a Tuesday deadline, I don't expect to get confirmation on those two things either. So look, I hope this video has helped you. I hope you're liking and subscribing. If you like this video, then let me know and I can do a captaincy video every week. I think this is the first time I've done a standalone captaincy video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, and I think it's so split this week. I think if this is a week to have a little bit of punt and a little, a little bit of a punt or a little bit of fun, it's the week to do it. So don't feel guilty about thinking outside the box and going for a Darwin or a Richarlison or a KDB if you think he's going to start. Like this is the week to have fun because there's no Son, there's no Sat, um, there's no Son, there's no Salah, there's no Haaland, but also Watkins and Saka feel like non-events at the moment. And because of that, that's five of the biggest names out of the equation. So have fun with those that you can go for and do it guilt-free. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with Team Selection. I'm going to do a live deadline stream on Tuesday as well. Don't miss that one. Uh, and as always, thank you for your support. Likes and subscribes, welcome on the way out. I'll see you next time.